hey what's going on guys welcome back to another video so first off i want to say sorry about my mic quality um the microphone i used isn't working correctly so i have to use another microphone which is well bad <laughs> so i'm sorry i'm sorry about the mic quality but anyways in this video i'm going to teach you how to use remote events and what they are so the best way for me to explain what a remote event is basically there's the client um actually before before we go do that there's um if you don't know what the difference is between a local script and a normal script, these two, I'll also explain what these are. So, what a local script is basically everything that happens locally on your client. So, this is your client. So, um, so basically, let's say you make a part invisible on a local script, it will be invisible for you, but it will be visible for everyone else. If you make a GUI visible from a local script, it'll be visible to you, but invisible to everyone else. Now, what a server script is, or a normal script in Roblox, that is a script that um, that changes things on the server. So every single client, let's say there's a game, and there are five players. So one, two, three, four, and five. There are five players in the game. So they all connect up to this one server. So that's why if a server is in America, it could be, and you don't live in America, it could be laggy for you because you're connecting to a server that is really far away. So all of these players have, um, they're, they're all individual clients. So if you run something on the local on a local script, it will only happen for them. So let's say this computer right here, we decide to give it um, 500 cash, but locally from a local script, um, so no one else, to them, it will look like they have zero cash to these people and to the server it will look like they have zero cash but for them it will look like they have 500 now if i change this computers so all of the computers all the clients connect to this one server so if i change this computer's cache to 500 from the server then on this computer and all the other computers it will be 500 for this computer um i hope that explains it basically every single player that joins the game there is the client and the server. Every single player connects to the server and anything that happens on the client only changes for that one computer, meaning if you're playing offline, or sorry, all offline games um, basically run on the client, not on any server. But if something happens on the server, then it will change for everyone in the game, basically on all the clients. I hope I explained that well. Let's get into the rest of the tutorial. So to start things off, you wanna add a remote event into replicated storage. This is usually where you should keep your remote events. Now there are a few ways you can use a remote event. You can either send information from the client to the server, or you could send the information from the server to the client, or the last thing is you can send the information from the server to all of the clients, so all the players in the game. So a good example would be a data store or a leaderboard. So if I make a leaderboard really quickly, so we'll just uh, make an event that detects when the player joins, and then we basically um, just make a folder named leader stats or actually an easier way to do this is if we make a folder here we name this leader stats this isn't the best way to do this i'm just doing this uh, so we can do this quickly so cache so we'll do local leader stats is equal to script wait for child leader stats clone and then we can do leader stats that parent is a good player there we go so now if i pre play the game you'll see how there is a cache leaderboard so i have cache so let me show you something real quick. You could see that we are on the current client right now. So if I go to my player's leader stats and I change my cache to 100, 100, you will see how um, it displays that it's 100, but for everyone else, it's gonna be zero because if I go to the server, now I'm on the server, and I go check my leader stats, you'll see how it's still zero. So if I change it to 1000 on the server, it will change for everyone, and uh, now you can see how it's 1,000 for me on the client as well. So all the other players it will be 1,000 for me, and also for me it's going to be 1,000. So a way people would usually um, transfer information from the client to the server is with a shop. So I'm going to just make a button that removes cash from your inventory. Just a simple button. We'll do. Um, we'll name it Remove uh, 10 Cash. Uh, I don't know why you would need this, but uh, if you make a shop, you can also use it like. Uh, th that way so we'll detect whenever the player uh, clicks on the button so we'll do script.parent.textbutton.mouse.1click uh, and then what we want to do is we want to make a path to the remote event 
keep in mind you can name this whatever you want you can't have more than every single remote event has to have an, uh, a name they can't there can't be like two remote events named remote event otherwise that may break things but we will type game dot replicated storage dot remote event then we want to type fire server so what we're doing here is we are firing the server um, so right over here if we name this script server you don't have to but I'm going to now we can detect whenever the remote event was fi has been fired. So we do game dot replicated storage dot remote event dot on server event connect function. This way we detect when it was fired. So on server event. So when you fire a remote event from a client to the server, there is always a default um, player. There's always player as the first. Um, I don't, I don't know what to call it, the first perimeter of the function. I really don't know what to call it, but basically it's the first thing in the function. So with the remote event, you could send information. So I could send a number like 10. And then over here, I could have player and then cache. Actually, we'll name it cache to remove because we want to know how much cache to remove from the player. So you can add as many of these as you want, but player is always first on the server because the server needs to know where it was fired from. Because when you fire a remote event, it default, it by default fires uh, like the player over here first. So it does game.players.local player basically, but you just don't see it. So now we can type player.leaderstats.cache.value. We could do minus equals cache to remove. Now this will get a path to the player's cache um, and then it will change the value. It will remove uh, cache to remove. Now cache to remove is right over here. And you could see it's 10 so i could set this to 100 or 1000 or 20 or 200 i could do whatever i want so over here you see how i said uh remove 10 cache so i'm just gonna have it as 10. so now actually before i play the game let's make it so i spawn with 1000 cache so now when i play the game so now that i'm in the game you see how i have 1000 cache so if i click on the remove 10 cache button you'll see how it removes 10 cache now you see it changed over here on the client so you see the client it's 990 and it also changed on the server and it also changed meaning it changed for everyone so i could do this as many times as i want so if i do it five more times one two three four five um you could see how i have 940 actually let's do it four more times and now i have 900 so you'll see how on the client i have 900 cash and on the server i also have 900 so i can show you it changing if i my mouse is stuck uh oh so I can actually show you it changing. So you see, we have 900. If I click remove, it goes down to 890, then 880, 870, 860, 850, uh, so on. Now, if we continue clicking this, if we get down to like zero, which, hold on. Actually, let me let me set it to over here. Let's do 10, 10. So if I click on this, you see how now we have zero. And if I click on it again, we'll have minus 10 and it will continue counting minus forever. So that is how you send information from a client um, from the client to the server. So a quick recap is what you want to do is whenever you fire the remote event, you want to do game that replicated storage that remote event or a path to your remote event. And then you want to type fire server and then you want to send as much information in here as you want. So you can do uh, like os.time. So that's the time you could do os.date. Like you could do what, whatever you want. And then on the server, you want to get a path to the remote event and then you want to type a dot on server event um, and then you want to hook that up to a function now the first thing in the function is called is player uh, whether you type game.players.local player um, inside of this fire server event or not and then the rest of the things are you whatever you sent over so this 10 is going to be the cache to remove and then if I want to add like a true uh, true value then right over here we can type true and the true value will be true and then we can also type a nil value and a false value and then we could type nil and false so all this information will be sent from here to here now let's say you want to send information from the server with the client then what you want to do is well let's let's make a new remote event we could do a server to client that's what we'll name it you can name this of course whatever you want I recommend you name it to whatever it's being used for. So for example, this is used for removing cash. So we can do a cash remove, or if it's for a shop, we could do shop. I'm just gonna keep it remote event for now, but server to client. So, all right. So if you wanna fire, send the information from the server to the client, 
we could do this. So we could do game dot replicated storage dot server to client. And then we could do fire client. Or actually, let, let's let's copy this and let's put this inside of the game dot players dot player added function. This way, it will uh, fire the client whenever a player joins the game. Now I know I could run this all on the server, but this is just for example purposes. So now we will basically script the server to the client remote event. So I'm gonna make it if the player is the owner of the game, they will get a gear. So here we have a Roblox sword. We will put it inside of replicated storage. Um, and then over here, I know I could uh, give it to the player from the server, but this is just for example purposes. So I'm gonna type if player.user ID is equal to game.creator ID, then, or actually this game is just a base plate, so it isn't actually published. So I'm just gonna type if my name is access queue. So if player.name is access queue, then we could type a path to the remote event. So game.replicated storage.server the client, fire client. No, not fire all clients, fire client. Now fire client, we have to define what client we wanna fire. So we'll type player. Um, so it's kind of like the reverse of the remote event from the client to the server. So the client to the server, we fired it. Um, we could fire it with no information, and by default, it will have the player. But on the client, on the server, to, the server to the client, we have to actually tell the server uh, what client to fire. So um, now that uh, we did this, we can go back into this script, and we could do the same thing as we did over here. So we can get a path to our remote event. So game that replicated storage dot server to client dot on client event connect function. Now, since we're firing it from the server to the client, we don't actually have to define player inside of the function, since we could just type, uh, we could just do local player is equal to game dot players dot local player. You can't do this on the server script, but you can send uh, any information that you want from the client to the server uh, or from the server to the client, just as you can from the client to the server. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm basically just going to give me a gear. So I'm going to do local gear clone is equal to game dot replicated storage dot classic sword clone and then we could do gear clone dot parent is equal to player dot backpack now i know i could just do this on the server like this instead of this i could do this but um as i said this is just as an example so now if i join the game i should get a sword and let's see if i get a sword the game is loading and yeah there we go you see i have a sword so um if i change the name to let's say roblox so we'll name it Roblox. Um, it shouldn't give me the sword because my username is not Roblox, it's access Q. And there we go, I don't have the sword. Now the last thing there is to teach you is um, about fire all clients. So if we do uh, the same thing, so uh, let's let's do server to all clients. So if we do game.replicated storage that server to all clients, fire all clients, this, we don't have to define what client we're firing because we're firing all the clients. So we could just keep this empty um, and it will fire everyone's client. So if I make a little GUI over here, we could add a text label um, and look, we can size it 10, 0, 0.10 1, 0, uh, and we could have it say, um, uh, wait, no, wrong font. Uh, nope, <laughs> I can't get the right font, there we go. We could have it say in gold or in yellow. Uh, let's have an outline. We could have it say the creator of this game has joined. We could also make it look a bit nicer. And there we go. So we could detect um, game dot replicated storage dot server to all clients connect function. If I forgot that I forgot to do dot on, on client event. My bad. And now we could do script dot parent dot text label dot visible is equal to true. Then after five seconds, or actually let's do three seconds, it will become invisible. So this will basically um, make it so whenever access queue the owner of the game joins the game, it will fire all clients. And then on the client, we detect when um, the client when that remote event is fired. And when it is, we make the UI that says the owner joined is visible, and then we make it invisible. So here's a quick example. Uh, if I load up the game, I hope it doesn't appear and disappear before my game loads. But yeah, there we go. The creator of the game has joined, and I still have my sword. So I hope I was able to teach you about remote events. Quick recap. Um, basically, to fire a remote event from the client to the server, we do uh, this. So we make a path to the remote event. 
then we type fire server and then we could uh we could keep this empty but um any information we send is going to be the second function on the server not the first but the second so over here over here just like this now to detect a remote event on the server we could do game dot replicated storage star remote event dot on server event and to detect a remote event on the client we could do a, basically a path to your remote event and then on client event the fire remote event from the server to the client we have to get a path to the remote event and then type fire client and we have to define what client you want to fire as the first um like variable function whatever you want to call it and then if you want to fire all clients you get a path to your remote event and then you just type fire all clients you could keep this empty or you could keep it um or you could send information to all the clients Thanks for watching. I hope I was able to help you. I'm sorry for my bad mic. If you're not subscribed, make sure to subscribe and turn on the notifications so you don't miss the next scripting tutorial. Anyways, if you enjoyed this tutorial, make sure to like and thanks for watching. Bye.